What were some of the biggest takeaways that you that you noticed? And you're right. We just got uh, a copy of this. This is it. It's a more than 20 page order. We're going to read through this a little bit together. We want to start with the biggest takeaway. It happens on page 17 of Judge Scott McAfee's order. And I'm, if it's all right, I'm going to read it and we can kind of work through it all sure. together. This is the big part here. Judge McAfee writes, the court therefore concludes that the prosecution of this case cannot proceed until the state selects one of two options. The district attorney may choose to step aside along with the whole of her office and refer the prosecution to the prosecuting attorney's counsel for reassignment. Alternatively, this is option two, special assistant district attorney Wade can withdraw, allowing the district attorney, the defendants, and the public to move forward without his presence, distracting from and potentially compromising, the judge says, the merits of this case. So the district attorney's office now has two options in front of them and a, a pretty weighty choice before sure. District Attorney Funny Willis. Yeah, one mm -hmm. or the other must go, but very significant that it allows the option for this case to stay in Fulton County, which is key for a, a lot of reasons. One, a jury pool would mm -hmm. remain the same. Also, this is the office that has spent so long investigating this case, knows the ins and outs of it, also so well versed in racketeering cases, specifically, which not every jurisdiction is so um, well versed at. So it's that's big. Very big. It's a, a particularly complex statute. Georgia's RICO statute in particular, even compared to the national statute, is exceedingly complex. This is also a, a case with that started with 19 defendants. So the idea of this case being removed to a different district attorney's office raises a whole host of challenges, not the least of which is imagine you're some other district attorney in DeKalb or Cobb or Gwinnett or wherever else and you are tasked with taking on this endeavor, just getting up to speed and mm -hmm. understanding the nuances of it would be a, a Herculean task. And that's we can't get inside the head of District Attorney Fonnie Willis, but you've got to imagine that's going to weigh on her decision-making process because mm -hmm. those two options, Special Assistant District Attorney, the Special Prosecutor, Nathan Wade, can withdraw from the case, and the DA, DA Fonnie Willis, and the rest of her office, according to Judge Scott McAfee, can move forward. Or the other option is that DA Willis mm -hmm. steps aside. When she goes, her whole office is then removed from the case. And what happens here, and we can take a minute to break down a little bit of the sure. order's language, what would happen in that scenario is the case would be sent up to what's called the prosecuting attorney's mm -hmm. council. It's sort of a, an oversight and organizational body for every district attorney in the state. And then that organization would be responsible for finding a new home for this case. And it's important to underscore this point, once that happened, and it could take time to find another DA's office that is willing to take on this case and has the resources, they have total autonomy over it. Mm -hmm. So there's no guarantee in that scenario where the case goes somewhere else that uh, the prosecution would remain intact as it at least originally began. Yeah, and let's talk about the timeline because, you know, the the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, they wanted to try this case at least by August. And if the district attorney were to step down, this would delay the start of that trial even further. You're right, and you get to a, a really important point I think it is worth us taking a second to, to dig into here because there's sort of a couple different tracks when you're in complex litigation like this. There's the, the factual arguments and making sure you build a robust defense on the fact for your clients. That's the job of a defense attorney. But there's also what you might call sort of procedural strategy. And delay in this case seems to have been a deliberate choice. And uh, you see it in many cases where you try to raise as many procedural issues as possible to move that timeline out, give yourself more opportunity to get new information to defend your client. And in this case, that is really without precedent. Uh, mm -hmm. in our city, in our state, and up until last year when we saw several other criminal cases against former President Trump pop up around the nation, unprecedented around the country, there is the election in November hanging over all of this. And mm -hmm. you've got to imagine some members of the f defense team want to drag this out as long mm -hmm. as possible, maybe to try to avoid trial before the November election, which many legal experts now say is not impossible, but increasingly going to be a difficult 
date to get this trial set by. Mm -hmm. This is charged on so many levels. It's politically charged. The timeline is charged. People are watching this uh, with a lot of different filters. Yeah, and also Judge Scott McAfee, he's up for re-election, mm -hmm. as well as the DA. She's also up for re-election. Now, you mentioned you can't get in the head of DA Fonnie Willis. You, we don't know which way she will go. If the special prosecutor were to step aside from this case, it will not de delay the expected timeline. It wouldn't move things back I think any farther than they already have been. It, it, this has been a more than two month now saga. It started as a, a, a single motion filed by one of the defense attorneys, Ashley Merchant. She represents Michael Roman, one of the 19 inde indicted co-defendants in this case. It happened on January 8th and it, it became the issue for yeah. two months here and those two months now are are gone. Mm -hmm. Manise, uh, the judge ruled the DA Willis can stay on this case, but with some very big conditions. The tone of the decision, pretty scolding, calling her relationship with Wade a tremendous lapse in judgment and left the appearance that the couple financially benefited from that move. The biggest thing is that it does leave the opening for this case to stay in Fulton County. This is sort of a, a split the baby decision in a lot of ways from Fulton County Superior Court Judge Scott McAfee. A lot of legal experts thought he would have to make one of two decisions in this disqualification question. He would have to either rule that no disqualification is warranted or that disqualification is warranted full stop and the DA's office Bonnie Willis, all of her prosecutors that work for her, including Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade, would have to be removed from the case. That's not what happened here. We're reading the order right now, and I, I want to read you two sentences from this order. We're working through it together, but this is the big takeaway, and I want to use Judge Scott McAfee's language here because it's best to hear it from the source. So here we go. This is Judge Scott McAfee writing in the order this morning. He writes, the court therefore concludes that the prosecution of this case cannot proceed until the state selects one of two options. The district attorney may choose to step aside along with the whole of her office and refer the prosecution to the prosecuting attorney's counsel for reassignment. Alternatively, this is the second option, special assistant district attorney Nathan Wade can withdraw, allowing the district attorney, the defendants, and the public to move forward without his presence or remuneration distracting from and potentially compromising the merits of this case. That's strong language. Mm -hmm. That is, a, in legal terms, a pretty harsh rebuke of Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade, and it sets up a weighty, weighty choice for Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Wells. She's got to choose. And I guess Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade also has to choose. Does Nathan Wade stay on this case, or does he go? allowing the rest of the DA's office, including Fonnie Willis, to remain. So any new district attorney's office, if it gets to that point, and we don't know, it's all going to hinge on DA Willis's decision on what to do of these two options. But if she chooses to keep Nathan Wade on the case, well, that means really no one stays on the case. Her whole office is disqualified. And what happens procedurally in Georgia is that the oversight body for prosecutors statewide, known as the Prosecuting Attorneys Council of Georgia, will in effect, take custody of the case, and it will then be their responsibility to find a new home, a new district attorney to pursue the case. That process of finding that new home could take months. The new DA, once they are uh, onto the case, will surely take months just to get up to speed on the more than 18, 19 total mm -hmm. defendants that were in this case. They've got to reread all the evidence. And then importantly, they have full autonomy over what happens in that case. So if we get to a point where this case finds a new home, a new DA is overseeing it, they may decide to pursue it in some other form that, this is all hypothetical here, we're telescoped way out, mm -hmm. but they could decide maybe some of these defendants they don't want to pursue after all.